Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Radiographic Interpretation Made Easy. This is case 12 and I have given it a nickname, The Surprise Insight. I am Dr. Lahari from uh, Oral Medicine and Radiology and uh, let's go on to the next slide then. Steps in radiographic interpretation, like always, would involve the radiograph taken, normal landmarks, uh, the uh, identifying faults, if any, and uh, then going on to the tooth or teeth of interest, and uh, looking at the crown, root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, radiographic diagnosis, and finally the differential diagnosis. We have an uh, interesting radiograph, as so you can see. The teeth of interest are uh, the, or the area is actually maxillary anterior region. And um, what do we have here? We have the 1-2, uh, 1-1, one, one, two, one, and 2-2. Two, two. And we also have an uh, impacted tooth in the midline. Now this tooth is exactly in the midline of 1-1 one, one and 2-1 and the uh, teeth which are seen, uh, supernumerary teeth which are seen in the midline are generally called as mesiodens and this particular mesiodens is actually impacted and it's not only impacted but it's also inverted in position. But you can see from this uh, image here that it's actually the crown is um, placed or close to the apex of the teeth and the roots are facing the other way around so this tooth is actually an impacted inverted mesiodense right so um, moving on what would the landmarks be in the maxillary anterior region now if you recollect you should be seeing uh, having a couple of landmarks in your mind and try and trace it out in every radiograph that you see so uh, the technique of matching what you're seeing with what your mind already knows is uh, the usual way of interpreting uh, radiographs and there is no better way than that so in this uh, radiograph let us look what we have the first of all is the intermaxillary suture indicated by the uh, orange line that which lies in between the uh, molar m I mean incisors then we have the incisor foramen kind of shifted here the shadow is because it probably the way the radiograph has been taken then we have the anterior nasal spine is the most radio opaque structure seen there a dense uh, way up uh, somewhere near the uh, area of the nose and you have the lateral fossa you can in fact see the lateral fossa on both sides uh, it's a depression where there's a less amount of bone density and and that's why it appears as a lateral fossa you also see the shadow of the nose which is indicated by this white line here and of course you see a dense area which is overlapping the mesiodens which is the uh, nasal septum so those are the normal anatomical landmarks seen in this maxillary anterior radiograph. Uh, it's important that you remember that you don't see all radiographs necessarily showing you the same landmarks, but uh, more or the less you should be able to find these landmarks in every maxillary anterior view. So uh, let's look at the uh, crown and the t uh, root of this particular area. Now, very clearly we can see that there are uh, a lot of radiolucencies which are mixed radio opaque areas so let's start with the one on the most uh, left which is the one two you have well defined radiolucency mesially with the radio uh, radio opacity mesially with the radiolucent rim suggestive of secondary caries distally there's a large radiolucency which is involving enamel dentin and pulp so this tooth is pulpily involved with secondary caries uh, moving on to 1-1, one, one, there is a distal secondary caries, similar in description. You have a radio opacity surrounded by a radiolucent rim. On the mesial surface also we have a similar situation. You have another secondary caries and it is again quite deep, which is already involving the center portion of the tooth, which is the pulp. Then uh, moving on to 2-1, you also see that there is a large secondary caries, uh, I mean a radiolucency surrounding the radio opacity on the mesial surface, which is again indicative of secondary caries involving the pulp of the tooth. Right. Uh, similarly, you also see a distal surface also having secondary caries, not very close to the pulp, but definitely involving enamel and dentin. And there's an intact restoration in 2-2. So, on the other hand, the uh, crown and the root of the mesiodens uh, seem reasonably intact and they look okay. 
right so um, moving on to the height of the alveolar crest what do we see we see that it looks normal if this is the CEJ then the height looks absolutely okay um, around 2 to 3 mm below the CEJ which is absolutely fine when we come to PDL and lamina dura oh, it's important to notice that our teeth of interest is actually 1 2 uh, 1 1 and 2 1 now 1 2 is may be a little difficult to interpret using this radiograph alone probably you will require another view but the the two teeth which are very visible uh, very clearly visible are the 1 1 and the 2 1 so if you look at the apices of 1 1 and 2 1 you will see that you can follow the line of the PDL all the way up to the apex mid uh, up to the apical one third but somewhere at the apical one third it gets blurry I cannot see the PDL and the lamina dura here anymore Similarly, even in 2-1, you can follow the white line of lamina dura all the way up to the apex uh, or even on the distal surface, but somewhere at the apex it gets blurry and you can't see the lamina dura and PDL anymore. So we have interpreted this as loss of PDL and discontinuous and loss of lamina dura at the apex of both 1-1 one, one and 2-1. The alveolar bone proper. What do we see? Uh, first of all, it's important to note that the mesiodens is actually, which is inverted, is inside the bone, right? So this is an unerupted or an impacted tooth. Um, and if you notice closely, you can see the enamel, dentine, and the pulp actually inside the tooth. And you will notice that it has still a thin rim of intact follicle around it. But somewhere here it gets a little blurry. You can't even see the uh, defined outline of the uh, dental follicle. What you definitely can see is that because of the loss of lamina dura and PDL at the apex of 1 1, there is ill defined radiolucency at the apex of 1 1. And this radiolucency is blending with the follicle of the impacted uh, mesiodens. So that gives us an impression that probably the periapical abscess, which is the ill defined radiolucency at the apex of 1 1, is actually blending into the dental follicle and perhaps infecting the follicle of the impacted mesiodens. Now, uh, moving on to the 2 1, what we see is a, a reasonably well defined radiolucency at the apex of 2 1, which is about 0.5 cm in diameter. I haven't outlined it because I want you to visualize it yourself. And uh, that is indicative of a periapical granuloma. So, 1 1 is having an ill defined radiolucency, whereas 2 1 has a reasonably well defined radiolucency. Right, so for many of you, you might not be able to make out this difference of ill-defined versus well-defined in this particular radiograph. But if you keep um, interpreting radiographs, that should become easier as you um, do more and more. So that leads us to the diagnosis. Uh, you have an impacted tooth with an infected dental follicle. And you have a 1-1 one, one which is having secondary caries and a periapical, chronic periapical abscess. You have 2-1 which is having a secondary caries with the periapical granuloma. Now the uh, differential diagnosis gets interesting because for the mesiodens, what, uh, when we're talking about infected uh, follicle, it could also mean that a widened follicle also indicates a dentigerous cyst. Now how do we differentiate the two? Generally in infected follicle, the, the, the follicle should be very irregular. And if this expands in future and if the tooth is central incisor is treated with an RCT and this radiolucency around the follicle persists, then it's important to extract this incisor and uh, uh, test the or do a biopsy for the follicle to test for the presence of a dentigerous cyst and of course it should be followed by enucleation of the cyst. Right, so the differential diagnosis for a periapical abscess would be radifying ostitis. You can go on to add on other differential diagnosis uh, like, uh, uh, you know, a periapical cemental dysplasia or it could even be an uh, osteomyelitis, but again, a little rare in the maxilla. Right, and for a periapical granuloma, the differential diagnosis would definitely be a small periapical cyst because it's reasonably well defined. Right, so I've uh, covered this radiographic interpretation for you. We've seen the interesting surprise element also. And uh, thank you for listening. If you have any doubts, please uh, email me. And that's it from me.